Good morning guys, Automotive Inquiries here. So I wanted to talk about, can washing your car at the car wash actually be jacking it up? And yes and no. So here's the things that I've learned over time and things that I avoid. And I'll give you a couple just quick examples while we're doing it. So I don't like those car washes where they have the big spinning like wiping mechanisms. They kind of look like a, a big Swiffer. And you drive through them and they kind of run down the side of your car. Here's the reason why I don't. I got mud on the, all over my truck. Now, if I was to use one of those, those things are whipping all that mud around and flipping it all over and then rubbing it down the side of my car. Well, after that, after I leave, those same whoop de doos that picked up my mud are now washing the next person's car. And that's why I've never used one and I won't ever use one is because, example, about 10 years ago, I at my job I was called out to a complaint where somebody had went through that car wash and their car looked like well shredder from the Ninja Turtles had just ripped down the side of that car well why because the person before them had a ladder aluminum ladder on the top of their vehicle and they uh, it tore it off and then shredded it and the person drove off knowing that they accidentally left that on top and it damaged the hell out of their car. Okay, now that's an extreme circumstance, obviously an aluminum ladder, but I just want you to keep in mind if they, those whip de doos held onto the aluminum, you don't think they're holding on to all this crap that I brought with me to spray off my truck or car. So I wouldn't use one of those, all right? Second ones, the automated ones that have the little blaster right here. I covered this in one of my other videos when I was talking about misfires and spark plug issues. and those things have so much power coming out of them that they're spraying up underneath your undercarriage. Well, we know that the undercarriage of the car gets wet and there's a lot of breathers and vents and electrical stuff underneath there that uh, we can get wet. But when you have high pressure water like that, that water can actually get inside your axles because your axles have vents on them. It can get up underneath the engine bay and it can actually get your coil packs wet. Now in the old Crown Vicks I used to drive, that compressed water came out so hard that it was just enough to get up underneath there and cook for uh, cook oil or cook coil packs. Say that 17 times fast. Anyway, so again, can it damage it? Absolutely. So if you're going to use an automated one, I would recommend just going right on past that, just because that always comes in the in the base pack, right? But you might want the most expensive pack that kind of blows it off and does it, you know. Uh, uh, a, like a, a light rinse at the end where it doesn't leave hard water stains. So I would skip that because that can damage your car. All right, next but not least, these beautiful ones right here. Woo, look at the water coming out of there. I, I wouldn't spray your undercarriage off much, much more than a garden hose, but this is off, okay? I haven't paid yet to use this. Now that's not gonna take mud off, but a garden hose with a sprayer will. But these things come out very, very high pressure. And you can do the same thing up here, even though we're not driving over it. So I would recommend that staying about 12 inches away from your paint, all right? We had a Dodge Durango that I was trying to get grease off, and believe it or not, I had a light tip in my personal pressure washer at the house. And that was enough, at six inches, the oil wasn't coming off, six inches, it peeled that paint off. So I really loved washing the car and then having to get my bumper repainted. Costly mistake, hopefully it'll save you guys some issues. But a lot of cars have decals, a lot of you guys have uh, seals and stuff like that and heaven forbid you forget to accidentally close one of your windows all the way So keeping you about 12 inches away will limit the ability for you to spray water up in places that you shouldn't In addition to that if you have painted wheels and they have a clear coat on them Which some of them do especially older ones that can actually peel them off So you're gonna just want to stay 12 inches away from everything now Can I use that same pressure washer one? Open up this engine band spray it off. Well, you can I wouldn't recommend it, okay? that Those engine compartments, again, have seals and wiring harness and everything like that. Now, they're water resistant, and they try and get them as waterproof as they can. However, when you're using high pressure water, it's more than likely still gonna have an opportunity to get into those cavities. And a lot of times, if you go to wash your car and then the next day you're like, ooh, the check engine light came on or something happened like that, might be because you sprayed it off. So if you're gonna spray your engine compartment off, I would, use, I would recommend using compressed air initially to blow all the dust off, get the dirt out of there because you can spray all day and still have gravel, dirt, and pine needles and stuff in areas that the water that, even if you focused on it for five minutes, might finally blow it out, but look how much water you had to use to get it. Now people will say, well, it's just water. Well, 
I don't know about you, but not, history has shown that water has more power than a lot of things. It's carved, you know, oh, canyons. It's carved, you know, th stuff through stone. It, it, it has done so much stuff that I don't think that I would want to do that with anything. So can you damage your car by washing it? Absolutely. My car gets hand washed twice a year. I don't uh, wash it a lot by hand because you're just never going to get all of this crap off. No matter if you go through an automated one, one of the whirly gig ones, um, or anything like that. It's really going to come down to that once a year where I get out my specialty buckets that have grit guards in them. And we actually uh, basically hand wash it. We wash it, spray it off first, then we hand wash it. And then that grit guard, when you wring it out, it actually allows the dirt to fall down through a garden and be no longer sus suspended in the water, or at least less likely for it to be suspended in the water. So again, I feel okay using the foam guns and the sprayer. Another thing I don't like using, and I found one of these the other day that had urine in it. <laughs> and if you look down there, the last guy that washed it, look at the brush. It's full of dirt. If you're gonna use one of these, and it's just gonna scratch the hell out of your truck. So I, I wouldn't recommend using these foam brushes either uh, because they do try and do their best to clean them out. And even if you came in and hung it up and sprayed it off the high pressure uh, sprayer, there's so much dirt left in this thing. I mean, ah, ah, I would never use this. I wouldn't use this on my wheels. Oh, look down there. That's the stuff that's falling off. So those are gonna be my recommendations. Just spray it off. Get the mag chloride off, get the salts off. Once a year, get a nice bucket at your house, a garden hose, maybe hand wash it. And then mine gets uh, a year um, wax that lasts allegedly a year. It gets that twice a year um, just to help protect it. It's enough to keep the crap mainly off, the brake dust off and everything like that. But unless you're using fresh buckets, fresh sponges and stuff, be real careful about using any type of brushes, uh, whoop de doo whatever they call them, type of car washes and everything like that. So. We'll see you on the next one, guys.